Lost the die roll again in round three, but we have a pretty fantastic draw. Nice set of spells and lands for keeping. I'll lead off with the Abomination of Godduel because right now I don't have black, so it'll be the first 2-2 uh, two -two I'd be offering to trade with. And we'll see how the rest of the game progresses. Dragon Scale Boon. Let's see if I like this over a Force Away, which I seem to be trading in. That third one has been pretty, pretty handy. And being able to draw multiples of those in the last match was nice. Even against a Secret Plans deck. But we'll also get to remind myself why Dragon Scale Boon could be good. Archer's Parabit, all right. Maybe an Abzan deck. Ooh, what a nice lay the land, which means I may not rock the um, Abomination as quickly. Maybe we'll start with the Glacial Stalker, now that I have the capability to the Abomination, which is going to be great against the Parapet, whereas the Stalker is the worst against the Parapet. Um, Pine Walker, I'm going to probably save for a, a turn 5, just hard cast. We'll see. Depends on what my opponent has. Alpine Grizzly, yeah, we're going to rock the Glacial Stalker out. Oh, never mind. We're going to walk, rock the Witness of the Ages out and try to offer a trade there. Be more than happy to do with that guy. Just put the, the weakest morph available onto the table. My opponent might want to go for it. You want to trade? You want to trade, my friend? Combat tricks like my opponent's own Dragon Scale Boon can be at hand, but does not have it. Huh. That's nice. I certainly would not mind having Dragon Scale Boon available. My opponent could have his or her own Dragon Scale Boon or a feat of resistance, which would then two for one me, because it would just become a four four. So I can't really attack. Plus the Archer's Parapet just block all day, every day. I guess we're just gonna progress the board out. Yeah. Leave up the opulent palace and pass the turn. Love being able to have Pine Walker. Opponent just pinging me? Yeah, so there we go. Love having the Pine Walker available just to hard cast next turn after we can attack him with both of our dudes and offer more flips, especially with a swarm of blood flies here. My opponent could just do like a block and try to do some trades and make the guy big. I have cards in my deck that are really good against it, but do I want to give my opponent that opportunity to have such a big guy? I could just attack with the Glacial Stalker, but then I'm saying to my opponent that this guy doesn't trade for the Alpine Grizzly. This becomes a 4-4 though, it gets a little scary. I, I can build out a way to make that okay by a uh, the abomination to like a dragon scale boon of some sort, but I don't know how much I like that. So if I attack with both, I'm pretty much going to be priced into flipping whichever one the Alpine Grizzly blocks. If, I, if it blocks the wrong one, I don't flip it. I just follow up with a Pine Waka. Question is, do I really want to deal with this as a 4 4, dude? Kind of locks me into caring about it versus just waiting a while. I can gum up the ground quite nicely, in fact. But my opponent's going to start forcing me to do some types of unfavorable trades. I'm going to deal with this Swarm of Bloodflies later. I think I have good attacks here, and uh, I think I'm just going to have to use the Abomination or just the um, Natural Assertiveness to like negate the Swarm of Bloodflies. And also rely on the fact... Oh, my opponent's not even blocking. Well, that's even better. That means that Swarm does not get too big. I just gotta rock out my massive pine walker. Removal spell would be a bummer, because then the pine walker dies and I take seven damage. But it's not the end of the world. Having a force away would be fantastic.
Highland Games before attacks is interesting. I'm obviously not going to block the flyer. Teamer chargers, meh. I'm not excited for this swarm to get huge. But the abomination will get to like rock out next turn in, the, in a fairly near future. So I think we're going to do the same attack. Even though now there is a Highland Games, there could be things such as double blocks. And it makes this guy huge. But we clear the board, and we might have a lot more pressure against my opponent than what my opponent has. And again, we're looking at the late game for the Abomination to get there. Three, four, five. Could only let three creatures die. So a Pine Walker killing both the Grizzly and the Highland game is going to be a little bit stressful for us. But I'm not too sure my opponent's going to want to do that while I'm also putting a lot of pressure against my opponent. I can flip here, but I'd rather just play the Abomination a good duel. Um, yes, the Swarm of Bloodflies is growing, but not at a, at a rate that's particularly worrisome. Now, I need to protect the Abomination quite handily here, because otherwise I don't have ways to deal with the Swarm of Bloodflies, though I do have two Force Aways to draw, as I mentioned earlier. But at this point, I'm pretty much keeping Dragon Scale Boon open at all times to keep Abomination available. I have to decide if I want to cast the... Ooh. 5-5. Five, five. Hello. That changes a little bit. Easily taking 4 from the uh, Grizzly here. Because I'm not turning off, like I said, the Abomination. I wish I had protection. I'm really tempted to attack in with the Abomination of Good Duel to get my loot on and to possibly try to bait in an attack with the Bloodflies and use this Dragon Scale Boon. These five fives are pretty nasty. My opponent have a Feeder Resistance, which wouldn't kill my Abomination, but I'd have to use the Dragon Scale Boon to keep my dude alive. Murderous Cut, three, four, five, oof, would be nasty, but that would that wouldn't my opponent would never cast it. Or could just cast it on its own. And it's gonna the murderous cut's gonna kill it anyway. So yeah, I do have an attack with the abomination here. It's mainly just gonna be hard um, on the blocks later. But hopefully with looting and actually being able to uh, pound there. I just wanna dig for a force away to be honest. Yes. Savage Punch is good too. Not gonna complain. I think we go for it now, right? While my opponent has not green available, if it's a feeder resistance, I kind of get had, but at least I don't die. Possibly my opponent would have blocked anyway. Am I ever going to get a place to where my opponent's tapped out, though? If it's a feeder resistance, what do I want? Well, I'm playing my Mountain because I'm going to play the Savage Punch right now. And in order to protect myself, we're going to put on the Pine Walker to kill a Swarm of Bloodflies. Feet Resistance is a one for one, but mm, it's okay. I'm okay with it. All right, I feel very confident now. I'm just going to keep open my five mana for flips and for Dragon Scale Boon. I assume my opponent's just going to ping me here. I'll probably just start offering trades. Pine Walker in front of Spirit Warrior, um, Dorky Morph in front of Alpine Grizzly, since I have... Um, the ground advantage or the, the flying advantage pretty well here and only use a dragon scale boon in response to something okay that's a little bit annoying but i got a lot of beef to make that happen or to protect myself my opponent can only do one activation at the moment anyway i assume there's no attacks since my oh opponent is attacking 
Okay, again, you should not be playing that in the first main phase. You should be keeping all mana available for later. I'm still okay with this trade off because of my flying advantage, as previously stated, which I will continue to press at the moment, especially having drawn a land. Oh, shoot. Well, that was dumb of me. I was supposed to unmorph one of my guys. Just totally wasted five mana, which is really frustrating. But I was thinking, already thinking about my next turn after having traded off. Yes, let's use the ability. Um, do I want the Teamer Charmer or the Air Ruff? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we'll get rid of the island. And we'll play this guy. It is quite a nice blocker. My opponent also missed an activation. Not as bad as my missed on morphine, but still a missed activation with the par parapet. Ooh, goodbye, my glacial stalker. This morph will block the alpine grizzly if it comes through. I will block the aerialist with the rishaka. I will block the rishaka. Is it what's it called? I mean, Rock Shasa Death Dealer with Aerialist if needed, but it's not needed. Ooh, Ice Feather Aven is so good. We're going to cast Face Down right away in order to lend some protection on the ground here. Might just ditch the Teamer Charger, even though it does trade with the Grizzly. Mm, don't need it as much anymore. I ditch it in terms of with Abomination activation. We're winning in the air at this point. That's the goal. Going to attacks. And could go for a Dragon Scale Boon here. But I lose to like a Murder's Cut, even though my opponent hasn't shown it to me. I'm going to play a bit conservatively here. Because I don't think we lose any other way. Another Aerialist? Yeah, we're going to ditch the Charger. Keep open our Dragon Scale Boon and our Ice Feather Aven. Oh, we have two lethal attackers already, or two lethal creatures already. What can my opponent have here? It could be a Dune Blast or a End Hostilities. No, it's an Incremental Growth. So who's getting big? Incremental is targeting Rush. I put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. This guy's getting two plus one, and this is a third on the archer's parapet. That's really weird to me. So, one, this guy becomes a three three, can't regenerate or anything. This becomes a six four, and I don't care about the parapet being a three, whatever, I just care about flying. I guess I'll let it resolve. Oh no, because I counter the entire thing if I don't let it resolve. Correct? I'm pretty sure. So, adios, big boy. That's one of the negatives of incremental growth. I just realized you just have all three targets. Ouch. I was going to let it resolve and then bounce later, see if there's any more tricks, but yeah, this just sealed the deal. I believe. Which my opponent realized and then just conceded for it. Um, I revealed my witness of the ages. And we go to sideboarding. Okay. Didn't see a lot of white for my opponent. Saw the Rakshasa dealer. Don't care as much about. I still like this Force Away over the Dragon Skill Boon. Especially seeing my opponent's tricks. Remember, there was a Dragon Scale Boon already. We saw the incremental growth. Definitely like the Force Away. I want to continue to rock out the air. Could do the Skullkin, but we already saw that we have a lot of good air guys already to get there, so I don't think I need to put in another one. So I guess I answered my question after playing this match out a number of times, which is, I guess a third Force Away is better than two Force Aways and one Dragon Scale Boon. Please, if you have thoughts on that, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinions. Also, that's a kind of a mini bonus that I'm learning. Um, this is the second Swiss I did 
uh, recently because I haven't had enough time, like I said, to draft because of the end of the, my school term. So I just had to guarantee getting recordings done on, on one draft. And sometimes if I do the eight fours and it's just a shitty draft and I'm recording, I have to do another one. So having done the Swiss now, even though the competition is still fun. It's, I always like doing the higher competition. It's been kind of cool. Uh, like this was a great way for me to learn something that I may not have learned if I was playing an 8-4 because I've already you know, lost in the first round. Now I'm getting to see this deck and some of the decisions I make in deck building a little bit better. I'm finding that pretty valuable. I like that quite a bit. I'm just making a note of it. Uh, might be something I do and switch back and forth during recordings. Uh, maybe do some Swiss, do some 8-4s, uh, just to get different perspectives and different ways of playing. Especially like now that's late in the format where pretty much everyone's pretty caught up. Like. Uh, early on in formats, Swisses are a little too easy in competition because people are still kind of figuring out they may not be drafting as regularly as, like, say, some crazy person like me who wants to draft, you know, multiple times a day. So the 8-4 is a little bit more um, lucrative in that regard. Um, this is an interesting keep. I'm on the draw, as I've always said. In this format, especially with having morphs, I have one Pinewalker morph plus two fantastic removal spells. I am going to keep. I got bit in the first round like this. Anyway, so back to my discussion, though. Uh, you know, maybe later in the format where I feel like the, the Swiss competition is still pretty good now that most of us have been playing for a while and we get it. So I'm, I'm not exactly like bored playing Swiss this late in a format. So that's kind of cool. Uh that I can maybe later in a format go Swiss, start learning more in-depth details about specific cards like I was learning about trying to make those the last cut being uh, awkward draw, but definitely playing it out, passing the turn, and then we'll rock out the Abomination before the Pine Walker. Even though both we don't have, I'm more likely to be able to cast the Pine Walker. Oh shoot, I just have six. I might have wanted to bounce the Kirin, but... I don't think I would, but it's a consideration. Actually, now instead of a morph, we'll just go ahead and play our Scion of Glaciers to maximize our manas. And we might even uh, get to a point of uh, punching the Kirin out of the sky, since one of our routes to victory we want is through the air. My opponent's stuck without black mana. Let's see, if my opponent does nothing here, This can only get pumped to a 4-3, so it's not like I can punch through the parapet. I think I just play the Pine Walker. I'm still taking a couple in the air, but with Savage Punches and Forces Aways and all those fun things, should be in an okay shape. I don't need to, like, pump my guy twice and then do a Savage Punch. Well, but then again, if I do that, I can attack if my opponent doesn't have a Feeder Resistance. And when, actually, yeah, I'm going to do that. Here's why. I would, normally would just go ahead and say, hey, let's progress the board, but I have two Savage Punches and a Force Away in hand. And being able to go boink, boink, Savage Punch now, uh, the Feeder Resistance is really the only thing that gets me into trouble, and it doesn't actually... Uh, um, do anything besides counter the Savage Punch, which normally would be detrimental. I'd want to save it to when I can guarantee it gets the creature I want, but with all this backup and Feet of Resistance being such a good card, I actually do just want to be able to uh, force this damage in right now. Let's switch my opponents without black mana. And here, there's really nothing my opponent can have in these colors besides like a huge combat trick, which would get it. It would be a 2-2, two -two, um, a 2 for 2. Uh, but it's forced my opponent to do like a dragon scale boon on like a really, really bad block. Here comes a Colossodon down. That's a big boy. Ghost Fireblade's nice. Do I do another Savage Punch? <laughs> that seems pretty bad though, since it will be a, uh, a two for one at that point. It just means we're taking six damage, which is gonna hurt like a mofo. I think we just play the Pine Walker down. Can trade with the Tusk Colossodon. It also puts a lot of pressure back on my opponent. 
Ghost Fire Blade was a consideration. I could play a morph and like Ghost Fire Blade, but that's more like our win condition. Um, get the Ghost Fire Blade on the Abomination. So right now, while my opponent's stumbling, and while we got a little bit of value here, we can like offer some trades that normally I wouldn't want to do. My opponent just written, mentioned in the chat that this is Redick, yo. I assume my opponent's really bummed that black mana is MIA. I don't know what my opponent's mana base is. It did look like my opponent was um, had a firm mana base, but... Alright, while I'm tapped out, mm, I'm not going to make this block. I think I'll just take the 6. I'm probably going to keep the force way up or like a savage punch or something against the um, Tusk Colossodon. See if my opponent plays anything. Does not. Well, let's try the Savage Punch. I'll have my Force away to protect my Pine Walker if my opponent does something silly. Um, and my opponent does not do something silly. That means we get to attack with both. And then just follow up probably with a, a face down creature. at the moment will be the Abomination, even though I don't have black mana up, that's fine. Because uh, if we draw another card, we can just hard cast um, the Aerialist or the Witness of the Ages, so there's... I figured this is the only way I'm getting the morph down at the moment. Opponent's still stuck without black mana, and probably just got um, fed up. Was falling really far behind, really... I mean... Was in a good spot, so sorry for the mana screw. That kind of sucks uh, when you get there. I want to see my opponent's mana bases. Makes me know if that was a uh, a player error or just variance. I'm gonna chalk it up to variance though. We saw a good mana base for my opponent last game. Hey, thanks for watching, gang. I'm Ryan. I make videos for ManaBluff.com. Uh, on YouTube, comment, subscribe, like. That's super helpful. On manabluff.com, if you comment, I promise to respond, which is a little more pertinent these weeks while I'm stressed with school, because I haven't, I just don't even bother checking YouTube at the moment, because I'm so busy. Uh, or you can find me on Twitter, underscore, underscore, rjh, underscore, underscore, to uh, say hey, or to follow my random musings of magic. Once again, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. See you next Friday, after finals! Woohoo!